This is a Panasonic Toughbook CF-48 laptop. Um, I got this laptop for free from a friend who actually had two of them. Um, uh, he only had one charger, so I got this one with no charger. And I recently ordered a charger off eBay. Yes, it was an aftermarket charger since I could not find a genuine one on eBay. But here's a really unique feature about this aftermarket charger. Here's the charger right here. As you can see, it resembles an IBM or Lenovo charger based on this little um, the little connector on the side of the power supply. And it also has these ridges, which I assume is how the older IBM ones were. And it has a two two-prong um, power connection there. Um, another unique thing about this charger was that it has this adapter on it. Um, yeah, this plugs into the laptop, but um, this part is just like a standard plug like that, and as you can see, this one has that plug there. So, let me go ahead and show you around the system. So, as you can see on the front here, we have the battery status indicator LED, and that's the power LED right there. Right here we have a microphone and a headphone jack. Over on this side, we have the Kensington lock slot and two PCMCIA slots. Nothing too surprising over there. Right here, got the power connector there. As you can see, it is a pretty weird power connector has like two little pins. I think there was like a plastic tube around them, but that came out. But it still works, and it doesn't short out or anything. So uh, right there we got a PS2 port. There we've got two USB 1.1 ports, um, a parallel port, fan, a little exhaust vent above the modem and the ethernet port. Um, right there is a serial port and a VGA port. Now here is the really exciting part of this computer. This is the reason I got this one, which is a Pentium 3 model, as opposed to the Pentium M model, which is newer. Okay, so right there is why I got it. Yes, folks, that is an LS120 Super Drive. And it does work very well. It's definitely helpful when reading and writing old floppy disks. It writes them and reads them very fast. Right there we just have a CD-ROM drive. So let me show you the bottom of the computer. And the reason I have it propped up on a book is because these rubber feet on the bottom are turning into like nasty, like liquidy, sticky stuff. And last time I put it on this desk, it left two marks, which I can't really find. Uh, right there. It left two marks from one of the feet. And I couldn't still haven't gotten them off and I can't get it off so let me flip it through the computer as you can see right there we have a docking station port um, right here we have the memory cover right here we have an easily really easily removable hard drive cover you see there the hard drive is actually enclosed in this like metal casing which I cannot get off. I don't think you're supposed to even get it off. As you can see they used a standard desktop style IDE connector there and it covers up the jumper pins on the drive so some of the pins aren't used. Um, so yeah, let me put that back on. Right here we have the battery which is also under quick remove cover. Um, yeah, it still works too, which I'm kind of surprised about. But yeah. Uh, right here we have the cover covering the modem and Ethernet combination interface card. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. Be right back. As you can see, the power connector doesn't really fit that well. You can see it kind of wobbles around, but despite that, 
The computer is indeed getting power, as indicated by the green battery light. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And be note, note you'll hear the super drive in its um, electronic inject system mechanism. So let me go ahead and turn it on. There's a super drive. As you can see, it is running Windows 2000. Um, for some reason, the audio driver doesn't... I don't know if it's the audio driver or something wrong with the computer itself, but the audio, you can just faintly hear through the speakers. When using headphones, it works perfectly fine. Oh, and another peculiar thing about this, you see these function keys on the keyboard? Well, they're actually not part of the operating system. Um, these are actually... Um, part of the display, I mean, I mean, they're part of the BIOS, I guess. You can see it shows the brightness indicator there. Um, so yeah, it's not part of the operating system, or it's not any installed software. It's on the computer's ROM. So as you can see, it's slowly booting up. Um, this computer has an 800 megahertz Pentium 3 processor. It has 384 megabytes of PC100 SD RAM, and it has an ATI RAGE graphics card, which I'll show you now. It also has an ESS audio drive, audio chipset, which I will show you. can see it is kind of slow. Now I do not know what that device is, but I will look up the device hardware IDs later. So as you can see it has an ESS Allegro PCI audio um, audio chipset. Um, it just has a generic modem. It's got an Intel 8255 based PCI Ethernet adapter. Um, and as you can see there, it has an ATI Rage Mobility graphics card, so that's that. Um, let me go ahead and demonstrate the Super Drive for you. So, as you can see, I've got a floppy here. I don't actually have any Super Discs, but it is very useful for writing and reading floppy drive floppies very fast. So let me go ahead and put it in. The drive there definitely sounds different than a normal floppy drive. All right, so to demonstrate the speed, I have a floppy image right there, and I am going to write it to the disk. Look how fast that is, folks! That is amazing, right there. You can see the floppy light is on, on the status LEDs there, and the light on the super drive is on as well. Look at that guys, we're already on 50%. This is amazing. Listen to that drive. It actually sounds really awesome. As you can see, it's already done writing. That would have taken at least two minutes on a normal floppy drive. So let me go ahead and eject the floppy with the mechanical eject system. As you can see, there is no um, pushed out button. So I'm just going to press that. And the floppy comes out. So yeah, that's the super drive. Um, let me go ahead and shut it down. It has a 20 gigabyte hard drive, by the way. I forgot to mention that. And 
just as a test, let me go ahead and boot off this floppy since I just wrote a bootable image to it. Let's see how fast it can boot off the floppy. That sounds so cool. You can see it's allocating the boot sector right now. And it is booting. As you can see, it is very fast. So, let me go ahead and eject that and turn off the computer. So, that's the Panasonic Toughbook CF-48. Hope you enjoyed this video.